Yo Ninjas, I'm Kai and welcome to the Windmill with No Head tutorial. I'm currently releasing some written power moves guides to help you learning them as efficiently as possible. I just published the first guide that is about the windmill. It's a detailed PDF guide that explains you everything you need for the windmill. You can use it kind of like a training plan. I will leave the link in the video description. In this guide, I try to put together all the information you need, keeping what is useful and throwing away what is useless. So if you really don't want to get confused with all the information you already got on YouTube, YouTube, just follow this guide to learn the windmill. The first and very important thing is to master each freeze, each windmill position. So first freeze that you really need for the windmill is the tarot freeze. This time you're not gonna use the head on the floor but you're gonna stay like this, not like this. Second freeze, side freeze, this freeze here, with your head off the floor again, not like this. Third freeze, shoulder freeze, also head off the floor. And then shoulder freeze on the other side, same thing, head off the floor. These are the three freezes that you need. Tatter freeze, side freeze and shoulder freezes on both sides. All of these freezes with the head off the floor. By the way, learning the windmill with your head on the floor, I already made tutorials on it. You can check them on my channel. It's way better for combos and to learn windmill variations. This windmill method, technique or variation, how you want to call it, without using the head on the floor, it's a little bit harder and it's also not so nice to connect with other power moves. There are some exceptions, for example, I would recommend to check out B-Boy Hide from Japan. He does windmills without using the head on the floor very, very good, he's dope. So check him out as a reference. But in most cases, the windmill with your head off the floor looks very ugly and it's very hard to connect to other moves. Learn it only for two reasons. First reason, because you, want, you really, really like it and you want to make it become very good like B-Boy Hida from Japan, for example. Second reason, because you are not able to bounce your legs properly in the regular windmill. This windmill, without the head on the floor, is very good to learn how to bounce your legs stronger because you have to really bounce your legs up in order to not touch with your head on the floor. Almost like jumping. In the windmill with your head on the floor, you still have to bounce, but the bounce could be not so important because you can roll all the time with your head on the floor, you roll, you can be very smooth and very fast. But for this windmill, you really need the bounce. If you don't know how to bounce your legs, learning this windmill could be useful to learn how to bounce your legs. But in my opinion, there are better ways to learn how to bounce your legs while doing the windmills. For example, learning the coin drops or the head coin drops and you're still gonna use the head on the floor and you're also gonna learn how to bounce your legs. I really don't find any good reason to practice this windmill. The only good reason that you could have is because you really like it and you really like b-boy Hida windmill, for example. Right now, I don't really remember any other b-boys who can do a very, very good and clean and fast windmill without the head on the floor. I'm sure there are some, but it's very rare. As I said before, this windmill looks very ugly in most of cases. If you can hold these freezes for at least 15 seconds or more, you're ready to practice this windmill. Oh, of course, you also need the backspin, I forgot. <laughs> the backspin is very important. So, first of all, try to connect the tarot freeze like this to the side freeze like this, without the head on the floor. So in this way you're gonna learn how to push with your arm and turn your body. Because in the windmill you have to push and turn your body. When you're doing the tarot freeze, to side freeze, the concept is very similar of doing like a tatter freeze to back. So this movement here, tatter freeze to back, to back spin actually. I really recommend learning the tatter freeze to side freeze first. When you master it and you feel very comfortable with it, try next step tatter freeze to back spin. To do it, you have to do the same thing, really push with your arms in this way, turn your upper body, kick your legs and try to land on the upper part of your back. When you are on the back, your head is up in the air, like this. So don't relax your head down, like a windmill with your head on the floor, but stay up this time. So, you should never touch with your head on the floor. Before trying to catch in a tattoo freeze again, let's learn just the back to shoulder freeze on the opposite shoulder. So, on the left, if you're spinning clockwise. From here, you have to bounce, push your legs up to the ceiling, and reach a shoulder freeze without the head on the floor. So bounce and reach this position here. Try this movement until it feels very natural and comfortable. Last exercise that you need, the hardest one in my opinion, 
To learn this move as efficiently as possible, you have to follow a specific plan or method and not just practice the move randomly or following too many different tutorials because they all give you different information and the training process could be a little confusing. The courses that I have created collect all the information that is very useful and structure it very clearly to make power moves easy for everyone. They also provide a training plan and some extra tips and concepts. From the shoulder freeze, so left one in my case spinning clockwise, you have to kick your legs up and backwards a little bit and catch the tower freeze again. So from here, bam, like this. Head off the floor again. So once you have all these freezes, you have the backspin and you have these combos between these freezes, tower freeze to side freeze, tower freeze to back, back to shoulder, shoulder to tower freeze. You just put together everything and you actually do the windmill. So slowly it will look something like this. Tower freeze, you push back, you push to the shoulder and you catch the tower freeze again here. When you do it a little bit faster, it will look more like a jump. By the way, if you will need breaking shoes, I really recommend these ones from Dizzy. You can find different colors and models. There is a link in the description. If you use it, you will have a discount on the shoes. If you would need more help for your windmill, check out the guide that I made, link in the description. And see you next time with a new tutorial. Yo Ninjas!